In this video, I'll try to recreate this Mr. Beast thumbnail in Photoshop, and we'll try to explain their process with what I know. Let's start by understanding his face effect to get that iconic Mr. Beast face effect in your thumbnails. There are three key things to consider, and first up is lighting. If you look at Mr. Beast's thumbnail, you'll notice there's no hard lighting. Hard lighting creates sharp shadows and harsh contrasts. This happens because there's only a single intense light source. Now, let's talk about soft lighting. This is what they use in Mr. Beast's thumbnails. One simple method to achieve this is using a light reflector. Reflectors help bounce light evenly onto your your subject, reducing shadows and creating that soft, balanced look. Now let's get on to our next step, which is creating the smooth skin effect. You can see in all of his thumbnails, there's no skin texture and no wrinkles. This is the image that I will use in thumbnail, and I want that smooth skin effect on it. I'm going to share with you the most easiest way to get this effect. For that, we're going to use this awesome tool called Wondershare UniConverter. Go to the link in description and you can try this tool for free. I already have it installed, we'll just open it. After loading, this will be the interface. This is an all-in-one sort of tool. You can see so many features in the Home tab, and that's not all. If you click here on More Tools, you'll see tons of more features. Download it now and explore all the features yourself. Now here at the bottom, there's an interesting feature for you, an AI Image Enhancer. We'll just click on it, and then I'll just drag and drop my image here. It'll analyze it for a few seconds, Look at the result, a perfect smooth skin, exactly as we wanted. Now, if it seems a bit blurry, we can also upscale it. First, let's export this one by clicking on this button and then click here on replace file. Click on yes, and then choose our enhanced image. By default, it is set to auto enhancer model. We will have to change it to AI upscaler. Then click on yes once again and let it analyze the image. By the way, you can change the export folder from here. See the result, much better and sharp now. You can upscale it up to 8X, but I'm happy with it. Let's export it and get inside Photoshop. Here I place the enhanced image on top of the original, then with inverted mask. I brought back the areas where I want that smooth skin effect. By painting with white color on the mask, see before and after. Now before going on to the third step, which is dodging and burning, I'll first create the rest of the thumbnail. I place the original for the reference, and then I will create simple shapes using pen tool to get the structure ready. We'll add textures to those shapes later on. Similarly, I traced all the other shapes as well. Added a dark solid color in the background. Then with a lighter solid color, I painted some light here at the top. Then I imported this steel texture, clipped it to the layer below and then right click and distort. I tried to match the angle as much as I could by just dragging these points. Then I made this texture darker with curves adjustment. Then with a hue saturation layer, I increased the lightness a lot, then inverted the mask and painted these reflections to give it a metallic look, just like the original thumbnail. Then I copied and clipped the texture to the top shape layer and then distorted this one as well and corrected the angle. Now for a change, I made this one gold color with a gradient map, changed the other shape's color to a darker gold color then added some reflections on it as well. They shouldn't be too bright, just subtle. His thumbnails has very smooth and soft vibe. So I'll try to copy that. Added some lighting here as well. With hue saturation adjustment, I decreased the lightness this time for shadows. Also increased some saturation so the shadows have some color. Then simply painted some subtle shadows here, some here in the corner, and likewise some on the other sides as well. Then it's time to paint some shadows below. Similarly, some here, some on this side as well. And lastly, we'll paint some here. Then I painted soft shadows on all the areas. It's time to add some highlights now. I painted these subtle highlights along the edges to create a sense of depth and dimension, just like the original one, which has similar soft highlights. I'm not going for realism, just trying to match the feel of the original thumbnail. After that, I traced these glass edges to create shapes like I did before. Then I gave them a gray color. Don't worry about the fourth side. That area will be covered anyways. Painted shadows here so it looks like there are two sides and then some highlight here. Removed it from the darker side and refined it a bit. Then did the exact same thing on the other edges as well, just trying to follow the original thumbnail. Then I imported this glass texture. Set the blending mode to screen, then right click and distort. I made adjustments to these points to better align with the scene's angle, ensuring the texture lined up correctly. Then with hue saturation adjustment, I desaturated the texture, then removed some of the areas with a soft round brush. Then added one more texture on this side and adjusted the angle. Lastly, lowered the opacity. I couldn't find any better snake picture from Freestock, so I'll have to use this one. I'm gonna cut a part of it, make it a bit bigger, and then use warp to get it as close as possible, like this. Then I placed one more part here, warped it as well, and removed this area. Then again, one more here with layer mask. I made only this area visible and tried to merge them both together. Removed the extra parts as well, then took one more part, rotated and placed it here like this. Then again, with layer mask, I brought back this area. Yeah, looks good so far. Then one more here at the back side, made visible only the area which is needed. Then one here, also masked this one out. Lastly, added the remaining part as well. Now time to import this image that we've worked on. Place him right about here, remove the unnecessary parts, and then cleaned up this chin and neck area here. I quickly added shadows to the snake and you could instantly see a big improvement. It looked much better and more realistic right away. Then I gave the snake some color with hue saturation adjustment, also some color to its mouth. 
remove the color from teeth. And it looks awful, I know, but let's just continue for now. I then painted some shadows below the snake as well. Then some more on the snake too. Then I painted shadows on his neck and chin area so it looks like he's actually in there. And then some more on the snake to improve the overall composition if you see in his thumbnails. His teeth are super white and bright. So I did the same and Furs took out the colors from the teeth and then made it brighter with curves adjustment. Now onto our third step for face effect, dodging and burning. For that, I use gray color layer with blend mode set to soft light, then paint with white on it for dodging and black for burning. I started with burning first and painted with black color on these areas to create these soft and smooth shadows. Of course, it's too much. I'll lower its opacity later and then did very subtle dodging as well added some red color to it, made the lips a bit darker as the original one. Then with lasso tool, made a selection for that scratch wound, gave it this dark red color, added bevel and emboss for some depth, then painted some red color below this cut. Then I added these round shapes with simple hue saturation layer and some bevel and emboss. Then I will use this screw and spread it all over those gold bars and gave them some similar color. Then I duplicated him and placed right here for a reflection and then removed some areas with layer mask and lowered its opacity. Similarly, I added the snake reflection in the back as well. Then I copied this area, aligned the angle correctly, filled this empty area as well, and finally lowered its opacity as well. Then did the same thing for this side as well. I just stole this eye from the original and placed it right here. Then I used an AI tool. I have a detailed video on it you can watch, and this is the result. I'll use it just to improve the snake. I imported it in Photoshop above everything, then removed everything else except the snake. Then I painted this venom here with a white solid color. Now to create these veins, what I'll do is create a new layer, set the fill to zero, and add the bevel and emboss with these settings. You can pause and copy if you want. Then if you paint with any color on that layer, you can see it creates this cool vein effect. If it's too much, you can paint with lower flow. I created these subtle veins as in the original. I'm pretty sure those are also manually created. Lastly, I added some dust textures and did some adjustments to overall design. And this is the result. I also made the steel version as the original. By the way, you can get PSD file of this thumbnail in description if you're interested. Now I know this could be a lot better, but this is where my patience said goodbye to me. Should I make next video on Magnate's Media Thumbnail? Let me know in the comments.